Order, please. We'll call the meeting with the House Assembly Management Commission to order. Begin by uh, commission members introducing themselves. Uh, first of all, I'm Keith Bain. I'm speaker and chair of the Management Commission. Now we'll go to Mr. Young. Good afternoon, everybody. And Nolan Young, MLA for Shelburne. Alan McMaster, MLA for Inverness. Good afternoon, MLA Danielle Barkos, MLA for Chester St. Margaret's. Kim Maslin, MLA for Queens. Ms. LeBell. Susan LeBlanc, MLA for Dartmouth North. Fred Tilly, MLA Northside Westmount. Derek Marquette, MLA Sydney, member two. And I also would like to introduce, uh, what's his name again? <laughs> Gordon Heber, Chief Legislative Council, and uh, uh, Clerk, Chief Clerk, James Troughton, and Matthew Timmons, Director of Operations and Administration. I think everybody has gotten a copy of the, uh, the agenda for today's meeting, and the first item of business is the approval of minutes. The, uh, the minutes were circulated in advance. Are there any corrections to the minutes required? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to adopt the minutes of the January 25th, 2003 meeting. Moved by Mr. McMaster, second by Mr. Mumbercat. You've heard the motion and you're ready for the question. Question has been called for. All those in favor of the motion, aye. show your consent by saying aye. 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 Can't remind it, nay. The motion is carried. The next is the 2022-23 audit report. And again, this report was circulated in advance of the meeting. I will turn things over now to the chief clerk to speak to the item. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The 2022-2023 audit report was presented to the audit committee last Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. It contains two opinions as follows. An unmodified opinion that the House of Assembly's expenditures complied in all significant respects with the specified requirements established in Section 225B of the House of Assembly Management Commission Act for the year ended March 31st, 2023 and an unmodified opinion that the Chief Clerk's assessment of the effectiveness of internal controls of the House of Assembly is in all material respects fairly stated and that the internal controls were operating effectively for the year ended March 31st, 2023. Um, happy to take any questions if there's any. Are there any questions or further discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion to accept the 2022 2023 audit report as presented. Mr. Young, do we have a seconder? Mr. Tilly, you've heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. Paper stick. The next item is the amendments to the House of Assembly Management Commission directives and House of Assembly Management Commission regulations. The first part is directive amendment three limitations on costs of appliances and purchases of coffee makers and coffee. The, the proposed amendment to the House was presented, directive uh, number one was circulated in advance of the meeting. And again, I'll recognize the Chief Clerk to speak to this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, in response to a request by an MLA, myself and the Director of Operations and Administration, Mr. Timmons, reviewed the limitations imposed by the directive, directive number <coughs> one, which you'll find on the annotated uh, Management Commission regulations, uh, a directive on the cost of small and smaller appliances purchased by MLAs for constituency offices. Um, these limitations have not been uh, updated since being established 10 years ago. Uh, we considered a request, also considered a request by an MLA to permit purchasing of coffee pods and uh, by extension single serve coffee makers for constituency offices in lieu, in lieu of coffee grounds and drip coffee makers. Um, we also discussed this matter with the House leaders uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and there was support for both changes. So the proposed amendment uh, removes what 
myself and Mr. Tim has viewed as a somewhat arbitrary distinction between <coughs> small and larger appliances and sets an overall cap of $400 on such purposes. This reflects that the original cap of $200 may have been unduly low and there have been no adjustments to that cap um, in the decade. Uh, this doesn't increase the amount of money that's available to M any MLA for their constituency budgets. Uh, it simply increases the maximum amount that may be spent on these particular assets. So this covers off your very small appliances like toaster ovens and things like that and, and coffee makers, uh, kettles. Um, but it also includes larger things like a, a mini fridge or a, an air conditioning unit for un, un air, air conditioned offices, things like that. Uh, sort of the small to medium appliances that would be appropriate for an office environment. Um, also, I would note these uh, items that are covered, they all on being purchased become assets of the Crown. So these are things an MLA doesn't keep. They either get transferred to the next MLA who, who comes in or they go to government surplus when, uh, uh, when the member ceases to be a member. Uh, the amendment also makes the directive uh, somewhat less prescriptive in nature and more clearly permits the purchase of coffee makers. Uh, the current directive specifically says drip coffee makers, which, uh, which limits it. Uh, it's a product of previous age. Single serve is more popular now. Uh, by extension, it wasn't possible for, uh, for MLAs to expense uh, coffee pods, but they could expense uh, coffee grounds for their offices. So we're sort of taking that away and just opening up to all coffee makers. Okay, thank you. So the, the motion that's going to be put forward is that the House of Assembly Management Commission Directive Number 1 be amended by striking out the final two bullet points and substituting appliances not exceeding $400 in costs that are reasonably be suitable for a constituency office, including a kettle, coffee maker, toaster oven, mini fridge, microwave, heater, dehumidifier, water cooler, and vacuum. So do we have a mover for that motion. <laughs> Ms. LeBlanc. Why not? Do we have a seconder? I'll second. Right. <laughs> Regularly moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, shall you consent by saying aye? Aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. The motion is carried. Okay. Again, we'll... <laughs> So we'll move on to uh, <laughs> the next amendment, uh, B, amendment to clause 21-1JA of the regulations. And again, I'll recognize the chief clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this also came in response to a request by an MLA and resulted in a review by myself and Mr. Timmons on the limitation imposed by the regulations on the maximum annual amount that can be claimed towards the cost, not including advertising costs, of constituency open houses. Um, we discussed the matter with the House leaders of the various caucuses and obtained input. Uh, based on the input obtained, uh, we propose an amendment that increases the cap from 10% uh, of the monthly am amount allowed to be claimed under subsection 43.3 of the regulations. Uh, that's basically $428 uh, based on the calculation, uh, to an even $1,000. This is a global limit on the amount that can be claimed for open houses. Uh, MLAs can have up to four open houses a year. Um, and I, again, would note that um, all of this must come from an MLA's existing budget. This doesn't increase budgets. It simply increases the amount that an MLA can spend on an open house. And again, that amount uh, hasn't been adjusted for, for some time. So unless there's any questions, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Any questions, further discussion? The proposed motion is that the proposed amendments to Clause 21-1 JA of the House of Assembly Management Commission be approved. Do we have a mover for that motion? Mr. Mabricat, do we have a seconder? Second. Ms. Maslund, if you're ready, you're ready for the question. All those in favor indicate aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. The motion is carried. The next is an amendment to subsection 211 of the regulations <clears throat> concerning safety equipment. Again, that uh, proposed amendment was circulated in advance of the meeting. And once again, I'll recognize the chief clerk to speak to the item. 
Thank you. Um, so this was also uh, an item that's come up in response to um, a request by an MLA. Um, we consulted, myself and Mr. Timmons, consulted the House leaders on the advisability of allowing members to claim the costs of steel-toed boots and other safety equipment when touring construction and work sites in their constituencies. Uh, the proposed amendment uh, received generally, generally positive feedback. Um, and so what we propose here is an amendment that authorizes members to claim for the costs of personal protective equipment for the personal use of a member, um, and it explicitly authorizes claims for safety boots, a hard hat, a reflective vest, and eye protection. Again, it's not prescriptive. Uh, it is does include other protective equi equipment that is reasonably necessary or advisable for the personal use of the member on visiting construction or work sites. So. You know, there could be other equipment that would be uh, that would be could be expensed under this, and again, any amounts claimed for must come from within existing constituency office budgets. So, unless there's any questions or comments, I'll turn it back over to the chair. So, once again, I'll ask for a motion that the proposed amendment to subsection 21.1 of the House of Assembly Management Commission regulations be approved. Do we have a mover for the motion? <coughs> Mr. Tilly, do we have a seconder? <laughs> Ms. LeBlanc. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate aye. aye. Contrary mind it nay. Motion is carried. <laughs> Number four, centralizing member IT hardware. And again, I will recognize the chief clerk to speak to this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, a briefing note on the subject of having Nova Scotia Digital, well, I guess it's now the Department of Cyber Security and someone help me, the news release just went out today, and Digital Services, Department of Cyber Security and Digital Services, uh, provide standardized and secure devices to members rather than having members purchase their own devices. Uh, managed devices benefit from antivirus, soft dates, uh, antivirus software updates updates and Windows patch updates to ensure the security of the device. They're also installed with encryption software to secure the content on the device. These devices and their peripherals would uh, also be fully compatible with and suitable for uh, virtual meeting software that the House of Assembly has used in the past in the event of the need for hybrid or virtual meetings. Uh, members would receive IT support services for such devices. Um, this isn't an item for any sort of decision today, What I but we've put on the agenda just to sort of put it in front of everyone and we're asking that the House leaders uh, uh, put forward this briefing note to their caucuses for feedback um, uh, for the purpose of getting feedback and and just some general thoughts so we can consider whether we're going to proceed on this item in the in the future okay uh, questions or uh, discussion mr. Mumbert. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just just a comment, really, more, and, and if if staff want to comment on it too as well, it's something we talked about a number of times, and really, uh, as a, you know, as, as an MLA and as a caucus, I think we and everybody really, we all understand that this is coming. I think it's important that we get ready for the next election cycle. Whoever is sitting in these seats uh, should be fully prepared, uh, whether you're newer or, or coming back to to do this. I think this is something that. The Auditor General has talked about in the past too as well, so I think it's an important step. Something that other levels of government have done, I've been ex experienced it myself at the municipal level where you're provided with the technology and the, and the technology support. So uh, I support this. I think, it's, I think it's a good move and I think the easiest way to do it is to build it up towards the next election cycle. Mr. Tilly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would agree with uh, my colleague, but I think I would I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to read it, but um, I would I would extend that to constituency offices as well. Um, if we're going to be looking after cybersecurity and and uh, having having the antivirus, I think it'd be very important that our constituency machines would would also fall under that protocol. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Any further discussion, Ms. Baslund? So I guess my question would be, because I think I brought this up here before, about um, the cost. So, you know, hopefully everyone will be reelected, <laughs> um, and we already have our own devices. So is like, it seems to me like it's a it's a significant 
waste, really, um, for all those uh, devices that we'd have, um, would we lo be looking at just taking this forward with new members and then trying to bring the other members in at a later time? Or is this deadline, new election, and then we start with all new devices? I, I just think about the cost and the waste. Mr. Trout. Uh, thank you. Yes, that's exactly what we would look to do. We'd look to have the new members coming in uh, in the next election, have them transition over, and then we would uh, uh, we would sort of grandparent in the existing members and sort of give uh, a reasonable deadline for them so that as they're switching, because obviously when it comes to your uh, uh, computers and, and phones, they have a limited shelf life. And so what we'd look to do is then over the, the following period, as they replace those devices, they would, they would uh, they would instead get one of these ones that's issued, uh, sort of the standard issue devices instead. So we don't, we obviously don't want to have people, you know, who've just purchased a new device have to purchase uh, something else, uh, pay for the cost of something else. So that's what you've described is exactly what we would want to do. Mr. McMaster and then Mr. Young. When I was first elected, I had a Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I remember wanting to move to, a, to an iPhone, but I couldn't move to the iPhone. Um, actually, I was quite happy with my BlackBerry, but I digress. Um, I did end up going to an iPhone, and, and I found, but I couldn't stay on the government server, so I had it. All to say, I think there are members out there, and I've heard from them myself, that prefer to be independent. And elected members are elected to the legislature. They're, they're not technically part of the government as an organization. They're, whether they belong to a, a political party or not, they are, they're elected members. And their status is different than, say, a government employee. So I know there's members who prefer to have their own uh, technology uh, preferences. And I don't think they would be happy about losing that independence and being required to have to have a certain standard. Uh, because it might limit the types of, of uh, hardware they can use and, and maybe and, and software too in both cases. So I, I'm not super keen on this idea for that reason. Um, I know that um, I know also like when we had the virtual sittings of the legislature, everybody had a different laptop. Everybody had it. it it did work. Uh, I know that probably we, we would benefit from having somebody from tech services to come in and tell us about maybe all the challenges they had with it, but it, it did work. Um, so uh, to me, it doesn't seem like something that's critical, a critical change. I do understand the logic, be, you know, going to something that's standardized and, and uh, to protect against, uh, you know, viruses or people hacking into emails. But I also know members have a pretty strong uh, sense of independence, a lot of them about the technology they want to use. So for, for my own two cents at this table, I, I think it's better to be left to the members to source their own technology uh, to suit their needs. Okay. Mr. Young. I was just going to echo the uh, same sentiment. I mean, there's different ecosystems and stuff, whether it be Linux or Windows or Mac or Android or Apple. Um, I think the most important thing is to have uh, up-to-date software and antivirus, regardless of the, the medium you use to do your job effectively. So I wanted to add that. Ms. Perkos? Well put, because that's what I was going to say. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you can have a different device with the same firewall or any antivirus on, on whether it's an Apple or it's an Android or it's a BlackBerry. Black, yeah, BlackBerry, um, you can have the same. So I'm wondering if that's an option we've looked into or if we can look into in order to um, protect us from any virus. Yeah, thanks, Owen. I appreciate the appreciate the discussion back and forth. And of course, there is issues around cost and issues around independence. And hey, I'd happily keep what I have. Um, it's easy and I don't have to change anything over. But I think that if you start looking at potentially what the Auditor General is going to look at down the road and potentially what other jurisdictions have dealt with with cyber attacks and stuff. I, I, just, I just don't think it's something we can avoid. I think at some point this is going to happen. Um, and consistency, and I'm like, I'm like uh, Mr. McMaster, I started out with a BlackBerry and uh, back in 2008 and you know we were provided with the technology just based on the fact that it was consistent for all the elected representatives at the time. So I'd happily stay 
where I'm at right now, but I think we're going to be one way or the other somewhere down the road. I don't want to say forced, but I think for the safety and security uh, of, of whether you're in government or an MLA or not, I think that's going to be brought upon us anyway. So I think it's important that we go over, do a couple of scenarios, bring it back to the management committee. But I still think consistently, as uh, Minister Maslin said, uh, the new ones coming in should be ready for this. And I think as, you know, depending on who wants to win and who wants to come back and who's going to be back, I think everybody's just got to be ready for it because I think it's not going to be ultimately the MLA's decisions in, in, in the end. Mr. Tilly, then Ms. LeBlanc. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to piggyback on uh, Mr. Mombriquette's comments and the fact that none of us around here that I'm aware of are experts in the field of um, uh, cybersecurity. And I think we would want to defer back to um, whoever is leading the charge in this capacity in the government. And perhaps there is a way to come up with a plan to, you know, as, as an option for a device you know, in, in other organizations that I've worked in, you, you can have a choice. You can have your Apple or you can have your your PC, but they all are tethered and, and the experts do the work to make sure that the system is safe. Because overall, it's about our data and the last thing we need is to bring the, bring, bring the data system down. So that's all I wanted to add, that I think we take a recommendation from the experts in the field and then we look at it in the future. Okay. Ms. LeBlanc. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, similar thing that, you know, perhaps, and I think I brought this up at another meeting, but perhaps there could be a uh, PC choice and a Mac choice or something so that there's, you know, uh, there's something for everyone as it were, but that they are all working together. Um, but I also think that if, you know, like, the, the, if you're newly elected, <laughs> you're newly elected and you do what you're told, right? Like you say, you, you take your computer. Um, <clears throat> and then those who are, who are, uh, who have, are veterans, as it were, <clears throat> then they have lots of lead time to plan for the change. I think it's, I think the change is important um, for all the reasons that have been stated. And I think that, you know, we can be flexible I, as human beings and figure out a new device eventually if we've got lots of lead time. Okay, Mr. McMaster. Just a question, is, is there the flexibility that members, when they're elected, could have the choice if they want to join, use government uh, endorsed technology and software systems that they could do that or they would have the chance to develop their own. That would be maybe a happy medium where it, it could be somewhat encouraged and made easy if they want to buy into the, the option that's available through government, but if they for some reason wish to have their own setup that they would still they could still maintain that right. I guess they can, whether we like it or not, because they're elected members. They can do it as they wish, but. Mr. Charles? Uh, yeah, just to address that, we'd, we'd probably have to go back to the department and see if they'd be amenable to the possibility of having some members serve on the standardized scheme and, and some not. Uh, it's uh, to some extent their call in terms of what services they're willing to provide us. I will say just because it has been raised by a couple of, of members of the commission, uh, what we've understood is the there won't be choice in devices in terms of, you know, an Apple package or a, or a PC package, the sort of members would get sort of the same thing as what, what public servants get and what, what ministers get. It's an Apple device for your for your phone and it's a it's a PC product, although there would be choices I think between different some different kinds of, of, of laptops and maybe even a desktop and that and likewise some different models of iPhone that would be available. But um, it's basically members are basically getting kind of what the public service is getting in this in this package. And that's about that really goes to what the department can support. And again, this, uh, it should be noted that this doesn't require a motion. It's being shared more for information that we're asking everybody to take back to their respective caucuses for further discussion. So, okay, no further discussion on that. The next item of business, number five, the annual CPI adjustment. Pursuant to subsection 52.1 of the House of Assembly Management Commission regulations, the fixed amount set out in the regulations except the amount referred to in clause 50A for mileage claims and the caucus office, caucus office entitlements set in, out in subsection 33.2 are increased on April 1st of each year by the increase in the consumer price index for Nova Scotia 
or the Consumer Price Index for Canada, whichever is lower. This adjustment is subject to the approval of the Management Commission. The CPI for Nova Scotia for 22-23 fiscal year is 4.5 percent, while the CPI for Canada for the same period was 4.4 percent. So the Management Commission must determine whether to approve the 4.4 percent adjustment. A projection of, of the income of the impact of the adjustment will have on a budget and a copy of the proposed amendments to the House of Assembly Management Commission regulations to reflect the adjustment were, were circulated in advance of the meeting. So I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Timmons to speak to the adjustment and we'll continue discussion after that. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Timmons. Um, so yeah, you can see the, the package includes a copy of a spreadsheet, a table that basically highlights each individual line, um, increasing it by the 4.4%. Um, those are kind of the two pinkish uh, blocks that you can see. I won't go in, uh, line by line, but basically each, each provision set out in the regulations is increased by that 4.4%. And then the second of those highlighted columns is the overall budget impact. And the bottom line is roughly about $195,000 overall increase globally across the MLA budgets. And then the second page um, in the package includes um, the proposed amendments that basically takes each of those lines and would be the revised amendment uh, for each, each change. Any questions and further discussion on the proposal? Nothing? We're left with the alternative of two motions to put forward, so uh, we don't know what motion to propose to anybody, so maybe somebody should speak out to it and we'll go from there. Nothing like confusion. Nobody wants to speak out? Or do you want to have time to look at it just for a couple of minutes? Everyone have a chance to look at the proposal. Is there any discussion? I think that's sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so history. Oh, Miss Perico, sorry. Sorry. Um, so right above this chart, we have um, 2022 CPI adjustment to MLA fixed amounts and the regulations per 52-1. History CPI um, change year over year as of April 1st. So we have from 2010 to 2023, although 2010 was not, not applicable, 
Um, so waived, approved, waived, 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 no action, no action. So um, can you explain the difference? Like they just, everybody stayed quiet, nobody put it in 2022 and 21? Or sorry, geez, I need better glasses. Let me just. April 2020, there was no action, so we just never did anything. Okay. I guess I answered my own question by saying it out loud. Mr. Chair, Chief Clerk. Uh, yes, I, I will confirm. There was there was simply no action taken. It didn't make it onto the agenda those years. Um, uh, the the one concern I would have, um, just very administrative concern about it, is is it doesn't really tell us what like is it still open to us to to go back and revisit that? Uh, that's why we we've tended to seek either a, a clear a clear approval of the increase or a rejection of the increase, just so there's no question that it's something that can be revisited. But uh, theoretically, it is an option to simply. You know, effectively and definitely defer the matter um, if there's if that's the the wish of the commission. Okay, so that's proposal number three, Miss LeBlanc. Just a question. I'm wondering if um, there's a recommendation from the clerk or the um, your office, Mr. Timmins. Is there like any can can yeah. Any recommendation? I don't know if uh, either the chief clerk or, or... Or what are the two options of the motions that you're talking about? <laughs> either either accepting the 4.4 or rejecting it. Okay. Yeah, that's basically what is it is. Is there a recommendation? If it was going to be based on what the discussion would be around the table as to what recommendation would make. So, Mr. Tilly. I guess I would just ask the question um, overall when we look at... MLA expense um, budgets where the majority of MLAs have fallen over the last number of years. Has there been budget left over or have MLAs for the most part been at their limits um, doing their work in their communities? So that would be my question. Mr. Timmons. Uh, so overall, historically, MLAs do not spend their whole budgets, um, but there's 55. So you know that you have some people on the extreme. Some people spend um, to the dollar and then some people have a significant surplus. Um, so as we, when we talk to our financials next, our, the majority of our surplus is due to the fact that MLAs do not uh, spend their full entitlements. Um, so that would answer your question. So is it the, I guess what I'm going to ask, is it the wish of the commission that the uh, recommendations one way or the other be held in abeyance at this time? Is that the indication I'm getting from everybody around the table. My goodness, what a quiet bunch today. Well, I'm going. I'm just going to assume that that's the wish of the media right now, and it may have to come up for, at a further meeting of the Management Commission. Okay, next is. Uh, a personnel matter and it's relating to uh, an officer of the House of Assembly that has to be dealt with in camera. So I'm going to ask everybody except the members of the Commission, the Clerks, Chief Legislative Council and the Director of Operations to leave and advise that when the, uh, when the discussion is over, we will invite the individuals back in. But we're going to take a five-minute break in order to allow Ledge TV to, to get ready for the in-camera session.
Order, please. The uh, in-camera session of the meeting is expired, and now we're going to uh, bring forward a motion that was made in the in-camera session. It was moved by MLA Susan LeBlanc that for any officers of the House, the salaries of whom the Management Commission is by order in council assigned authority to determine from time to time such authority be delegated to the Chair of the Management Commission under subsection 12.1 of the House of Assembly Management Commission Act. That motion was seconded by MLA Derek Mumberkett and was carried. So that uh, finishes that. We move on to number seven in our agenda. Financials for the first, second, and third quarter and preliminary year-end reports. And uh, the, again, the, the financials were circulated in advance of the meeting. And I'll ask Mr. Timmons to speak to the item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so all four quarter sheets have been presented. I will only uh, briefly speak to the, the preliminary year end. As you know, MLAs can submit expenses up to June 30th for the preceding fiscal year. So this is just prelim preliminary numbers, but we don't expect them to change that much. Um, the blue columns furthest to the right indicate our, our money spent to budget. Um, so the bottom line of that shows our surplus of 1.188 million, which is 95% of our budget. And as I previously spoke to, um, this is primarily due to MLAs not spending their uh, full constituency allowances or their travel budgets for the year. Um, this is also typical of a non-election year. This surplus of about one to 1.1 million. Um, last year, I believe it was about 750, 800,000, uh, which was a little lower due to it being an election year. Any discussion or questions from any members? Nothing? Okay, again, this is, uh, doesn't require a vote, but it's just for information purposes at this time. That concludes the Management Commission agenda. We'll now adjourn the meeting. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.